Good evening and welcome to Small Group. I'm very excited to be talking to you tonight um, about what we're going to be talking about. Uh, the passage that you guys just read, Isaiah chapter 40, um, is probably one of my top 10 favorite passages. Um, and I don't know if it was just because uh, I used to wait tables in high school and part of college, uh, but when I read specifically verse 31 of Isaiah chapter 40, uh, when it tells us to wait upon the Lord, I don't read that as a uh, excuse or a, a, I guess a call to stop and, and not do anything, just freeze and, until God works out the situation in our life. But to me, that reads as a call to action. I spent five or six years, as I mentioned, waiting tables in high school and and I know that uh, it takes hard work and a lot of constant attention to provide good service. And even when you're overloaded or uh, as servers call it, when you're in the weeds, um, you have to deal with those, those customers who had a bad day, who are upset, who hate each other and, and somehow take it out on, or for some reason take it out on you. Uh, but you still have a job to do. You know, you, you try to provide good, constant service regardless of how well or, or how poorly your shift is going, uh, regardless of if you're getting good tips or not. Uh, you, you try to be consistent and do your job uh, to the best of your ability. And when I think about trying to be consistent in the midst of, of ups and downs and highs and lows, I think David is a perfect example. David was just a young boy, around 15 years old, when he received um, the call on his life, when he was anointed as a future king of Israel. And once being 15 years old, I can imagine um, just his imagination must have run wild with it. Uh, his life was, was changed as he knew it. And, you know, as a young boy, being a shepherd, he spent a lot of time out in the fields with just the sheep and um, I know I had a very wild imagination growing up, and, and, and I'm sure he had a lot of time to think out there. Uh, but he probably ran through all the different kind of scenarios about how his life would be, um, the, maybe the different decisions he would have made or um, how he would have all kinds of servants. He would eat big, fancy meals in a big, fancy house. In his mind, being 15, he had it all figured out. The trouble is, or was, there was a, already a king of Israel, King Saul. And if King Saul ever found out that, that David was anointed the, the next king of Israel, um, King Saul probably would have had David killed. Imagine having a life-changing secret and not being able to tell anybody about it. And David was even called before King Saul uh, to play his harp whenever Saul was, was having a bad day, when he was in a bad mood. And it must have been very difficult uh, for David to, uh, knowing that you're the next king of Israel, to be forced to play your heart for this moody, temperamental king. Um, but another high point of David's life was when he was able to deliver a victory for the nation of Israel by defeating the giant Goliath, who was said to be over nine feet tall. And it wasn't just a victory, it was the way David uh, had the victory. David always had a flair about him. He always had a, a way of doing it dramatically. And, and uh, people, he was very charismatic, people fell in love with David. Um, but he did it without any armor. He went out there just in his clothes. He had a sling, a, a couple of stones, and the, the power and the anointing of God. And as a result of this great victory and accomplishment, um, he found favor with Saul and, and, and even became as one of Saul's sons. He was very highly favored. In fact, he was given a place in the, the kingdom and a place uh, in the army, and uh, he became a great warrior, and his reputation among the people grew, even to the point that people would, would sing about how King Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his ten thousands. And I, I can imagine having spent all that time in the, in the wilderness thinking about 
uh, how he was going to be the next king and how he would do things. Um, now that he was starting to get a little bit of recognition and a little bit of fame, he was probably thinking that, okay, I can finally see how this, this anointing is going to come to pass. I can finally see a clear path to the throne. But unfortunately, as David's reputation grew and his fame grew, so did Saul's jealousy. When Saul would get in one, and get in one of his moods, David would come in and play the harp for him and try to calm him down, and, and Saul would just get livid and, and at two, in two different occasions uh, actually threw a spear and tried to kill David. But no matter what Saul did to David, David always tried to do his job to the best of ability. Whatever he was assigned to do, um, the Bible says on multiple occasions that he used great wisdom. Um, the more David succeeded, the more Saul feared him. The more Saul tried to hurt or kill David, the more people loved David. And eventually the persecution became so great that David was forced to run for his life. David was forced to leave his high place in the kingdom, uh, commanding a thousand men in the army to living in the wilderness and drawing and, and eventually forming um, an army of misfits, an army of outcasts. And even in the wilderness being hunted by Saul, David used wisdom in, in trying to do what was right and even had the, the opportunity to take Saul's life on many occasions, but he always did the right thing, um, didn't want to touch uh, the chosen, the anointed of God, so he would always spare Saul's life. Um, but, but David's story of ups and downs and highs and lows continued on throughout his entire life. Even after Saul was, was killed in battle, David uh, assumed the throne, um, eventually united Israel, and, and had a very lengthy reign. But his, his reign was, even though it was marked with, with incredible victories and blessing, um, unfortunately it was also marred with murder and treason and uh, lots of mistakes. But one thing that was a constant was David's focus on God in his life. He wasn't perfect, uh, but he was constantly pursuing the heart of God. And in fact, um, when, it, when David was first chosen to be anointed to be the next king, uh, it was that quality about him, that, that uh, his desire, his pursuit of God's heart, that uh, initially led to him being anointed. Uh, a few passages that give example of this when Absalom his son was trying to split the kingdom and, and even trying to kill David Psalm chapter 3 starting with verse 1 says Lord how they have increased who trouble me many are they who rise up against me many are they who say of me there is no help for him in God but you O Lord are a shield for me my glory and the one who lifts up my head Psalm 18 gives us another example uh, when Saul was actually trying to, to kill David, was chasing David, starting in verse 1, says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And a, a last example, uh, when David was actually captured by his enemy, uh, he wrote this psalm in, in Psalm 56, starting in verse 2. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me? I know the answer to this next question, but how many of you guys have ever had to suffer through bad service at a restaurant uh, or at a place of business? Um, maybe, maybe the server who uh, you can see that they're hiding in the back um, or they just, they're just they visiting with their friends or just maybe downright ignoring you. Um, you know, your, your cup is empty. There's no silverware on the table, or maybe only half your food was delivered. Um, 
we all have stories of, of terrible, terrible service. And it's kind of one of those things that you can only really laugh about after the fact. When you're kind of in the middle of it, it's, it's a very frustrating. Um, but we do. We get very frustrated when our servers, someone that we expect to um, pay for a service, and, and they're not providing that service. Most of us, eventually, we have that awkward decision to face that, uh, how much are we going to tip this person? You know, just being truthful, uh, are we going to tip them based on their performance? Are we going to tip them, um, are we just going to give them the benefit of the doubt, just assume that maybe they were going through something? How much are we going to give them um, based on the service that they performed? I wonder if God doesn't have a big blessing and, and for us and answers to our questions, um, but we end up settling for mediocrity all because we refuse to put action into our lives. We're going through a tough time, so we hide out in the back, and I don't mean in the back of the church, or, um, but we, we just kind of withhold something. We don't give our all uh, into our relationship and our walk with God. And we refuse to wait on the Lord, so he, he is unable to renew our strength. He's unable to lift our spirits up with the eagles as the the, uh, prophet Isaiah said. It it makes you wonder how different David's story would have been if he had just vanished into the wilderness, never to be heard from again. Uh, If he had taken his his little band of merry men and disappeared and and never to be recorded in, in scripture. How different things would have been for his family, his legacy. The truth is we all face trials, we all face struggles. And we all go through ups and downs, highs and lows. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit that uh, I wish things were all easy and, and smooth after coming to Christ. But the reality of it is, is we all live in this world. We all live in a sin-filled, corrupt world, and life is going to happen. But if we commit to serve the Lord consistently, just as David did, uh, he's there to love us, to strengthen us, to encourage us and to lead us through these tough situations.